Hello, my soccer universe. Sometimes soccer just is not fair. Got a warning, this will be one of my, those therapeutic videos at the end of the Serie A season. Let's first get the positives out of the way. My team Lusk up there. 1 5 2 against Austria Vienna. So we were in second spot, but at least Austria Vienna did have no chance of making a fixed spot, so that's always fine. Um, and the wonderful season for Lask, and this is basically the one positive uh, for this um, entire campaign. If I look all over, I mean, not that I'm super disappointed all over the place today. I was this probably was the biggest disappointment so far, and not even for Milan, to be honest. But yeah, this was my positive, and still, I think even more would have been possible. But you know, I gotta take it slow. Five years ago, we were playing in the third division, now the second best team in Austria. And a Chelsea win, and we're in the European group stage, which we've never been. So that's that. But let's go to Italy. I promised that I'll be wearing either Inter or Milan, depending on who makes it to the Champions League. Of course, if they would have made it both, I would have worn Milan. That was clear. I have my Inter jersey here. I cannot bring myself to wear it. I really don't. And it has nothing to do with me hating Inter. I just think they... This was so undeserved. In many ways that, yeah. Let's walk through it. Let's walk through it. I made extensive notes uh, how it happened. Well, games kicked off and right off the bat I saw that Sassuolo, who were playing away from home, at home, to Atalanta, uh, basically with um, uh, many changes from the reg, regular squad, which basically to me meant that Atalanta will have it relatively easy. And it took a while until things got going. Uh, actually the first game, and this was the game that was the least important, but it uh, would have had some implications if there, uh, in, it could have had some implications in the relegation zone. Kaleri took a lead against Udine in the 17th minute and that was exactly what was not needed from <laughs> for uh, most of the other uh, teams down there because uh, as we talked there were um, scenarios that if Udine doesn't win uh, or, or loses then that goes into the head-to-head -head table. In the end Udine ended up winning 2-1 so it was actually a non-factor. But then, a minute later, in the 17th minute, so uh, Cialanoglu scores for Milan. Milan at that point should have he should have had even a bigger lead. I saw that they were storming out. Um, that was nice to see. Cialanoglu had had already a chance. Fortunately, Donnarumma got injured and needed to be replaced with Pepe Reina. And despite Pepe Reina, when he got a little bit in form, was actually not that bad. I still, I'm not feeling as safe with Pepe Reina as with Donnarumma, although Donnarumma cost Milan a vital point against Sampdoria, that has to be also said. Uh, and then a minute later, I'm over the moon. Peradis goes for Sassuolo. At that point, Milan is third in the table, ahead of Atalanta. They were already when they took the lead, but that actually meant that Milan is three goals safe. I mean, Atalanta would have had to score two, Inter one that they uh, are not quali qualifying. So three goals, that seems a lot of, seems good. And news got even better, because uh, just a few minutes later, this was in the 21st minute, Kessier scores, makes it 2-0 for Milan. Milan looks, look, look safe, they should have been, had even a higher lead. But yeah, just when I was reveling in that, and I have to be careful, never should do that, um, Vicari, first chance for Spal, 1-2 and yeah, from that moment on Milan looked a little bit uh, shaky. In the meantime, uh, there was also the direct, yeah, the head-to-head, -head, I shouldn't say direct duel. This is uh, Germanism. We say directest duel, which is direct duel, but I should say um, the head-to-head -head between Fiorentina and Genoa, the showdown. Where if Genoa wins, they can put Fiorentina in danger. Fiorentina needs a point, and depending on, on the result between Inter and Empoli, 
um, a draw is enough for them, both of them. And they were playing like Inter will for sure win this one. Uh, absolute non-aggression pack, almost no chances. I think there was one at the very beginning um, for Muriel and then there was not much coming. I mean, the com commentator said, I'm sorry that I have to show you this because it's really horrible what's happening there. In the 33rd minute, Zapata equalized with a messy goal. Um, and it's a mixed bag for me. Uh, the goal itself, you know, he was on the line, got the ball, it was dropping onto him. It was He basically stumbled it in, in internet uh, on, uh, after a corner kick. To me, this meant, yeah, two goals away for um, Milan to not qualify. But on the other side, at this moment, Milan and Atalanta are through, which was probably the most preferred result from my point of view. But yeah, Inter in the meantime had chances. I mean, they were pressing hard. Um, and I wrote down Inter is only a mad, mad matter of time until they will score. But uh, the goalkeeper made some really great saves. Um, Dragovsky, we'll talk about him anymore, made some really great saves to keep the game uh, at nil-nil. And even Empoli made it to halftime. And uh, well, 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 what I could say that Empoli is playing actually with confidence. They are playing out. They're not uh, punted down. They very nicely playing forward when they get the ball and feel secure. Inter kind of you could feel this ner nervousness, especially also coming from the fans uh, that kind of, you know, they walk in on other shirt and all those kind of things. Um, so the mood was not great there. Then Roma Palma, that was another game that could have done Roma's chances were academic. I said it from, from the beginning. They got in the 34th 1 uh, 0 lead uh, through Pellegrini. And yeah, um, safely say we, there was not much hap happening. This game did not have any impact on who's going to make it to the Champions League. However, it was Daniele De Rossi's last game, and that was important. And then halftime comes around, and there's the first real punch against Milan's chances. Um, right at the end of the half at the Atalanta Sassuolo game, there's a big melee uh, seemingly caused by a little scuffle, I think, by De Ronenz and uh, Berardi. And in, in the end, it's um, given two uh, um, yellow cards for the guys who were fighting and the Berardi, who scored for Sassuolo, gets a red card and is sent off. And at that moment, you knew Atalanta is going to go through. The halftime was probably one of the longest halftimes I've seen uh, so far because the referees were waiting that all the games started at the same time. And thanks to the melee, the break at the Atalanta game really took a long time. But at halftime, I couldn't have been happier. I mean, everything that I honestly wanted was there. Um, yes, I know that Genoa is a team with lots of tradition in Italy, oldest team probably belongs in Serra, but what I heard about their owner, uh, they probably would be better down. However, it all changes. Um, Spalletti brings on Keita Balde, and just six minutes into the second half, Keita Balde uh, scores a pretty stunning goal, so slams it in, and that actually now changes things, and uh, quite quickly a lot of things were happening. So with that goal. Inter now is in third, Milan in fourth, Atalanta in um, fifth place and would be out and also Empoli would be relegated now. Two minutes later, Salim Faris equalizes for Spal. So Milan goes to six, six points and now it's Atalanta and Inter through and pretty much in the, at the same time, just a fraction later, Papu Gomez um, dusts off and makes it 2-1 for Atalanta against Sassuolo. So now Atalanta Inter both win no matter what the others do, they are through. And to be honest, this is what I was afraid at halftime. You know, it was two goals away and it's one goal in each game. I was afraid of this happening. Uh, but if you, I thought, okay, this is going to be boring. Uh, but there was still a lot of drama. Uh, in the... Yeah, uh, it was actually two minutes later, penalties given for uh, Inter. They took three minutes of our review and the goalie Dragovski of Empoli, actually, I think he played the ball at the same time as he just got into Icardi. It was a bad back pass. 
And yeah, uh, after a long review, I thought there could have been a chance that it's not given, but it was given. Didn't matter. Icardi shoots it very weakly in front of the interfence, and Dragowski can save it. I was through the moon ahead, or actually, just half a minute before I had written down Icardi 2 0 penalty Inter. I had to swipe it all off. Very happy about that. Was a relief because with 2 0, I think this would have been done, done, done and dusted. I really believe that Empoli can get something going. And Empoli really showed everything. Inter got so nervous, and Empoli was playing great from that moment on. They knew they have a chance. Um, then, just uh, four minutes after the penalty, which was in the 60th minute, the missed one, uh, Pasalic makes it, um, Pasalic makes it um, 3 1 for Atalanta, but it takes five minutes for the goal to be given for some weird VAR review that no one um, knows what the referee was looking at. Uh, but yeah, 3 1 Atalanta, Atalanta is for From that moment, Atalanta was really cruising. And then a minute later, penalty given for Milan. Also looking over at VAR, it is given. Cassier makes a second goal, 3-2. So Milan just needs to play it safe, plays it home. I haven't seen anything else from, from, from Milan game from then on, but I know Milan played it home. They get the win. And 10 minutes later, I'm jumping up. Empoli, who had already a huge chance to equalize, um, makes a nice attacking move over, over the right, a nice pass, comes across in, and suddenly it goes through all the defenders, and Trare has an empty net in front of him and gets the uh, ball in. 1-1, one, one, Inter out, Milan in, yay! That's all I needed. Uh, then in the... Uh, that was in the 76th minute, so really not much time, 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 time to go. In the 81st, then the big goodbye for uh, De Rossi, but we don't see it because Nangolan converts a shot for Inter that came off the post, makes it 2-1. And at that moment, Empoli had another big chance. And from that moment on, Empoli really tried everything and they had chances with attackers going in the box. Hamdana, which just uh, making great saves. I gotta give it to him, he was the best interplayer by far. Empoli, if they would have had a good striker, they could have made two goals at the end, even gotten the win and be safe. But yeah. 1-1, they were safe, they're not. And again, nothing happening at the um, fiorentina Genoa game, except that there was a good chance by Chiesa, but that was that. Uh, the Roma game, Parma then equalizes through Javinho uh, after De Rossi was take, taken off, but um, in the 89th, um, Perotti makes it 2-1. And everything looks at Inter Empoli. Empoli putting it to Inter. Inter cannot get anything together. Uh, except then in the 93rd, they, uh, there was a oh, nine, 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 four, it was a corner, corner kick for Empoli. Dragovski come, come, comes out, it doesn't go anywhere. Quick counter attack, uh, the ball uh, comes to um, Brozovic, who takes aim and puts it into net 3 1, game over. Nope. Keita Balde, Dragovski was trying to uh, jump back, Keita Balde pulls him back. And the goal is wiped off, a yellow red for Keita Balde, and um, I think there was also a red card for Empoli given. One last minute and Empoli gets a corner, gets another chance, it just does not go in and I feel so bad for them. Inter holds on, Inter gets the win. Frankly, this was not deserved. I don't even care about Milan, Empoli did not deserve to get relegated if I take just the picture alone of today. Empoli should have gotten a point at Inter. Inter was a mess. And not only the jerseys, which are, you know, from the distance, this is a lighter blue than usual. You can get used to, I think, in 1994, they had some, something similar. Um, Inter did not deserve this. And the, 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 the jerseys have a little bit too wide and then the whole strapping, it's all a mess. But they're through. And yeah, 
I've been thinking about it. Um, that game at the end of the season, Inter did not deserve that. But Milan also didn't really deserve. Where can I look now for the points missed? Um, I think I have to look at the first derby. Where if Milan gets a little bit more careful, Icardi doesn't score, score the stoppage time winner. And it's there. That would be the point swing. Although Inter was better in both derbies. So Inter kind of was between the two. When you look at the head, head, head to head, Inter probably would deserve it. I think Atalanta is in there. Uh, I have no problem with that. They absolutely deserve that one. It's between Inter and Milan. Both had their ups, both had their downs. I don't, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm a little bit gutted because, uh, you know, Milan is now in the Europa League, but we know all that is, they're going to be exclusive from the Europa League. Uh, they're going to have a big rebuild, probably selling off a few players. Mm, not sure how this is going. So, yeah, we'll see. Elliot wants to make money of Milan. So I guess if I look over the entirety of the season, Inter probably deserves to be above Milan, which is six. And so since I promised, let's do it. Let's get it over with. Here is me wearing Inter. Congratulations, Nero Turi for the messiest victory that I've ever seen. But here it is. And with that, let me know what you thought um, about the Serie A finish. Anything else that you want to share with me? Um, as I said, I feel really with Empoli. Genoa did not deserve it, Fiorentina did not deserve it. Empoli would have deserved to stay up. Empoli would have deserved to get this point that they need. Not like this. Uh, it's misfortunate. Absolutely misfortunate. Um, in the end, it was not even between Milan and Inter, to be honest. Um, I really feel with Empoli. Anyway, let me know in the comments below how you feel about the whole thing. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And yeah, I will talk to you soon, hopefully in a better mood. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.